If baseball is America's pastime, then perhaps the baseball stadium is America's architecture. For over a century, baseball stadiums have reflected the changing tastes and ways of life of fans and the culture around them. This is a video about the history of ballpark design, from early days to the present. We'll look at what has made baseball stadiums one of the most fascinating types of architecture in America. Let's get started. The first ballparks were rudimentary wooden structures. Early wood ballparks were not built to last. They were simple and unsurprisingly prone to fire. But as baseball grew in popularity, ballpark design became more advanced as team owners sought more permanent homes for their teams. And thus we entered the first major period of ballpark design, jewel box parks. Jewel box parks were small but intricately designed stadiums built of concrete and steel. Examples include Brooklyn's Ebbets Field, Cincinnati's Crosley Field, Forbes Field in Pittsburgh, Sportsman's Park in St. Louis, and of course, Chicago's Wrigley Field and Boston's Fenway Park, the last two of which are still standing today. The prominence and elegance of these parks reflected baseball's growing status as a national pastime. These were hallowed grounds, well-used facilities which catered to a working class and growing middle class population. But most notably, jewel box parks were urban in nature. They were located centrally in cities, as most fans walked or perhaps took a streetcar to the game, and therefore they had to fit into tight urban spaces, many fitting into one or two city blocks. And these constraints led to odd shapes and a wide variance in field dimensions, among other irregular features. To this day, baseball is the only major American sport which does not have a standardized playing field, and perhaps this is perfectly exemplified by Fenway Park. The stadium's left field was cut off by Lansdowne Street to the north. The simple solution was to erect a big left field wall, which came to be called the Green Monster, or Wrigley Field, which is sandwiched almost perfectly within two city blocks. Its tight confines allowed adjacent building owners to cash in by erecting rooftop bleachers across the street from the outfield. These elegant parks with small footprints were worthy of the name jewel boxes. But it was an era that would come to an end. As many Americans moved to the suburbs, a new type of stadium would come to dominate the sport. When the Brooklyn Dodgers moved to Los Angeles in 1957, it symbolized a changing landscape in America. The Dodgers' new home, Dodger Stadium, reflected its location in the heart of car-centric Los Angeles. Surrounded by parking lots and at the confluence of several interstate highways, Dodger Stadium turned its back on the concept of an intimate urban ballpark. Stadiums followed fans out to the suburbs, attracted to ample parking, easy highway access, and the seemingly endless supply of cheap land. Dodger Stadium would herald a new era of large suburban, often multi-purpose stadiums, sometimes known as concrete donuts. Parks that exemplify this era include Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium, Bush Stadium in St. Louis, the Oakland Coliseum, Veterans Stadium in Philly, the Houston Astrodome, Toronto's Sky Dome, and Pro Players Park in Miami. These stadiums were massive but economical, titanic Roman coliseums for a post-war American middle class. Often with minimal architectural detailing, concrete donuts were a triumph of function and efficiency over beauty. Often, these stadiums would host baseball and football under the same roof, and in the case of Minneapolis's Metrodome, that roof was inflatable. But combining two incongruous playing fields was awkward. Oftentimes, there'd be an excessive amount of foul territory, like in the case of the Oakland Coliseum, which not only lowered batting averages, more foul outs, but kept fans further away from the action. And designing seats for two separate sports often led to awkward sight lines and a diminished fan experience for both sports. AstroTurf was often employed in indoor multi-purpose parks. Pioneered in Houston, it changed the way the ball traveled and led to increased risk of injury. But by the 1980s, these stadiums already felt old, dilapidated, and dated. And a new philosophy of stadium design would soon return the sport to its golden era. In 1988, a stadium opened which would change the course of baseball stadium design for the next three decades. 
Pilot Field in Buffalo, New York was only a minor league stadium, but it was the first of a new class known as Retro Classic Parks. It featured a smaller footprint, a more intimate baseball-only environment, and an urban location in the heart of Buffalo. It harkened back to the olden days of jewel box parks. In 1992, using Pilot Field's playbook, Oriole Park at Camden Yards opened its doors, becoming the first Major League Retro Classic Park. Its integration with its historic urban surroundings and use of traditional architectural details as well as materials like brick reflected a nostalgia for the game's past. A wave of ballparks would follow the Pilot Field Camden Yards model, like Detroit's Comerica Park, Denver's Coors Field, the third Bush Stadium in St. Louis, Pittsburgh's PNC Park, Atlanta's Turner Field, and San Francisco's Oracle Park. These stadiums incorporated history and nostalgia, and they were often the centerpiece of a push to redevelop adjacent urban neighborhoods. Other parks were inspired by the scale and feel of retro modern parks, but integrated more modern architectural styles and technology like retractable roofs. Seattle's T-Mobile Park is a perfect example of this. Its brick facade is reminiscent of a classic park like Ebbets Field, yet its 10-acre retractable roof utilized some of the most cutting-edge technology and engineering at the time. Baseball is a sport of nostalgia, reflected by a fan base that skews older, and the retro parks were designed to indulge that nostalgic fan. But in recent years, a few parks have eschewed references to the past in favor of a fully contemporary aesthetic. Miami's Marlins Park looks very Miami, offering a curvy, clean, yet comfortable alternative to a nostalgia overload. And the much maligned Globe Life Field in Arlington, Texas shows us what a truly modern baseball facility could, or perhaps should not, be. And while it's anyone's guess what baseball stadiums might look like in the coming decades, we can look at the past to understand a rich continuum of ever-changing design, but all unified by one key constant, America's pastime, baseball.